Good morning. Welcome to this Syncfusion webinar, Build Better Mobile Apps with Syncfusion and Xamarin. My name is Aaron Melamed. I'm a product solution specialist at Syncfusion and your presenter for today's webinar. If you have any questions, you can enter them into the questions box on the right side of the screen at any time. We'll answer the questions at the end of the session and also post the entire Q&A on our blog. There will also be a live Q&A team to answer your questions throughout the webinar. We are recording this webinar and will share the link in the next few days. All registrants will receive an email with the link. This and previous webinars will be available on our YouTube channel. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly tell you a bit about Syncfusion. Syncfusion delivers an extensive range of over 800 web, mobile, and desktop controls. We also empower businesses to get the most out of their data with our enterprise solutions, including the dashboard and big data platforms. We've been in business for over 15 years and are headquartered in the Raleigh, Durham area of North Carolina in the US. Syncfusion has more than 1,200 customers, including large financial institutions, Fortune 100 companies, and global IT consultancies. More than 1 million users from 125 countries trust Syncfusion in their development process. Now that you know a bit about us, we can begin the presentation. On today's agenda, we'll be looking at downloading and installing Syncfusion Xamarin controls. We'll also take a look at our Syncfusion sample application, which will be the main portion of the presentation. And then we'll then wrap up with our Q&A session and some more information about Syncfusion's licensing options. The Syncfusion Xamarin Suite is comprised of over 90 total controls for Xamarin. That includes Xamarin Forms, Xamarin iOS, and Xamarin Android, all in one package. We offer complete MVVM support for creating scalable and testable applications. We also uh, keep our product continuously updated with four major releases per year, in addition to monthly service packs. We also offer seamless integration with Visual Studio, including NuGet support and IntelliSense comments. In today's presentation, we'll be looking at uh, a couple of our Xamarin components. Uh, we're not going to have time to go over everything in the Xamarin suite, so we'll focus on just these four for today. First, we'll start off with the Syncfusion Carousel. Uh, the Syncfusion Carousel allows for uh, easy navigation uh, for images interactively. It allows you to swipe easily through different images in a set. Next, we'll look at the List View, which allows you to render a set of data items uh, inside of a uh, Xamarin view, Xamarin Forms view work using a custom template. Uh, data can be grouped, sorted, and filtered with ease. Then we'll look at the PDF viewer as well as the PDF generator. So the PDF viewer, viewer allows you to view PDF documents. It also supports uh, additional features such as um, annotations so you can do strike through, um, highlighting, as well as underlining. And then lastly, we'll also take a look at the Syncfusion Busy Indicator, which is a collection of uh, over 10 pre-built animations for uh, displaying or indicating that your application is busy, loading, or doing some, some sort of activity. All right, let's go ahead and switch uh, into our presentation. And so before I begin, uh, I actually want to start by talking about how do you actually get access to Syncfusion controls. So I'm going to start with the Syncfusion website. So there are two ways to get access to the Syncfusion controls, specifically the Xamarin components that we're going to be looking at today. The first way is to simply download them from Syncfusion uh, website. So if you come to Syncfusion.com, you can go to Products, click on Xamarin, and then you'll see you'll have access to a free trial here uh, right on the home page. Once you've uh, chosen to download a free trial, you'll get access to a Syncfusion account. So I'm going to log into mine. And here you can see on the left side, we have a download section. So in the download section, this is broken up into tabs. So if you uh, have chosen to get a free trial for all of Syncfusion's product, the entire suite, you'll have access to all these other tabs. So you have the Essential Studio, which is our component set. And then the rest of the tabs are for our enterprise solutions, such as the uh, report platform, dashboard platform, and so on. So when dealing with our components, uh, you'll, whenever you see this list, everything at the top is the most recent release. Uh, you actually have access to everything that Syncfusion's ever released going back uh, 15 years. Um, but again, we're going to stick with the, uh, the most recent release here. So top link. And then once you click into that, then things are broken down even more. So you have the option at the very top to simply download everything, period. So that's all the Syncfusion components as well as all the samples that we, that we provide for all of those component libraries. 
If you don't want the samples but you do want the components, the other two uh, download options um, will provide that, specifically the, the binaries here. Beyond that, you also can break it down even further and just download the specific platform controls that you're looking for. So uh, with respect to today's presentation, we're looking at Xamarin, so we can come down here and just download the Xamarin components. When you download the separate components, you don't get the samples. You can also see here that with Xamarin, we also provide a Xamarin Mac download. So if you're using Visual Studio on a Mac, you can still use these components. Just come here and download the Mac specific package. So that's one way of getting access to the Syncfusion controls. Uh, if you do it this way, you'll of course be able to reference all the assemblies from your local machine and use them in your application that way. If you'd rather use uh, NuGet packages inside of Visual Studio, we can uh, we support that as well. So uh, the, if you want to use NuGet packages, the first place you want to start is the Syncfusion documentation. So coming here uh, to our, my next tab, I've pulled up the help.syncfusion.com website. So this is the online documentation page uh, or site for Syncfusion. So you can see here under mobile, at the very top, we have Xamarin Forms, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. So I'm going to click on that. And inside of here, you'll see there's a section titled Download and Installation. And again, it's broken into Mac and Windows instructions. I'm on a Windows PC today, so I'll click on Windows. And you can see here, it walks me through setting up the NuGet packages in Visual Studio. So it gives me the, the URL that I need to put in as my source, and it shows me where I need to put that. So here's that source URL. And the same thing uh, is available for Mac. So it's essentially the same instructions, just of course tailored to um, Visual Studio for Mac. All right, and that's pretty much it for uh, f figuring out where to go to actually get your either your NuGet packages or the actual download from Syncfusion. So now let's go ahead and move into Visual Studio itself. Okay, so now I am inside of Visual Studio, so let me go ahead and run uh, my application. All right, so I'm going to launch the Android emulator. So I'm going to be focusing primarily on Android uh, today. It'll just be simpler to uh, just deal with this one instead of having to jump back and forth between iOS and Android. So uh, I'll only be looking at the uh, Android emulator today. All right, so now that I have my application up, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're working with today. So today's application is, is an app that allows you to select a car brand, then you choose a car model based on that brand that was chosen. And then from here, once you choose a car model, the app will generate a PDF based on that model and then display it in the, uh, in the, on the following page inside the Syncfusion PDF viewer. And so this is what we're going to be working to, with today. So it's a relatively simple app, only three pages or three content pages, um, and we're using just a handful of Syncfusion controls. But uh, as we'll see, it's still fairly involved in terms of getting this uh, up and running. And so we'll take a look at how everything comes together. All right, so this application was created using the uh, MVVM design pattern. So you can see on the right here that I have my view, view model, and model folders. And I have a couple others here that I'll talk about uh, once we get to those. So before we, so to actually begin, let's look at our, our dependencies. So I'm going to go to the solution itself. So I'm going to right-click on solution and manage NuGet, manage NuGet packages. Uh, this is the this is how I'm going to be uh, using my dependencies. I'm going to be accessing them via NuGet packages as opposed to uh, referencing them locally. And so you can see in the top uh, right here that I already have my Syncfusion Xamarin package source uh, created. So I've done this previously, obviously. Uh, and so in order to set that up, again, if you were to follow those instructions that I mentioned earlier, you simply come here, click on the gear icon. It brings you to your um, package sources manager, and this is where you would go to create a new one. So you can simply click the plus sign. It'll give you a new slot to create a new uh, 
package source, and then you simply plug in the Syncfusion source link here. Uh, the name doesn't really matter. You can name it whatever you want. I've chosen Syncfusion Xamarin. And so once you've done that, then you can switch between Syncfusion Xamarin, NuGet.org, and any, any other package sources that you've um, created. So uh, let's start by in, um, adding in all the Syncfusion packages we're going to need for this project. So from Syncfusion, we're going to need the Syncfusion carousel. You can see when you uh, when you search for that, you, you come up with three different results. So there's a Syncfusion carousel, and then there's another, then there are two others that are specific to uh, the Android and iOS platforms. Since we're using Xamarin Forms, we're going to stick with the first one that does not specify a platform. This will be the, the Xamarin Forms version of it. Also, take note that when you look at the description, it does say you need to install this on all of the Xamarin Forms projects, so the PCL, Android, iOS, and UWP app, if you're targeting all of those platforms. And so in order to install it, simply Click the select the uh, project checkbox here to select all the projects in the solution and then install. Again, I've already done this, so I'm not going to reinstall. But there's the carousel. We also need the list view. And here you can see we have we only get one result here. And again, you need to install it into all the projects in the solution. We also need the busy indicator. This is the Syncfusion uh, activity indicator. Um, animation library essentially in the KTOR and here again you do see that there are three versions of it and we're going to stick with the one that does not specify a platform um, this this description is actually uh, currently out of date uh, the current version of the Syncfusion indicator currently uh, includes 15 animations instead of 13 and so same thing uh, they need to be installed into the complete project into uh, all projects in the solution and then we have two more. So we need our Syncfusion PDF library. This is what's going to generate the PDF uh, file that we'll be displaying later on. And so this will simply be syncfusion.xamarin.pdf. And again, uh, installed into all projects in the solution. And then lastly, we have our PDF viewer, which is a little bit different in terms of the package name. So this is Syncfusion Xamarin SF PDF viewer. So Syncfusion PDF viewer. And you can see, again, this one has uh, some platform specific versions as well. So like everything else, this will need to be installed on all projects in the solution. And so that's it for all the Syncfusion packages we'll need. So they're all simply the, the actual controls that we'll be using in the project. And then there's one more that we need um, that's not a Syncfusion component, that, or at least that I've used in this project. And so if I go back to uh, nuke.org, uh, it'll be Newtonsoft J uh, JSON. So I will be using a web service to retrieve those uh, car models. Uh, and I'll be using Newtonsoft JSON to parse through those results. So that'll be the only non-Syncfusion component we'll be using in this uh, project. And just like the others, you'll need to install it into all, all projects in the solution. OK, so let's start by going over the different models that we'll be using in this application. So you can see here in the model folder that we have two, uh, two different uh, classes. We have car brand and car model. The car brand uh, model is actually pretty simple. So if I go into that, you'll see that it's, it's uh, comprised of two properties, brand name and brand logo. I also have uh, an overloaded constructor that you'll see uh, being used later on in the view model. But otherwise, you can see it's pretty simple, just two properties. Next, we have the car model class. This one's a little bit more complicated, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this one. So uh, first of all, this one inherits from the car brand class. So you can see uh, it brings in the car brand and uh, or the brand name and brand logo properties. And then we add one more, which is model name. And so in the overloaded constructor for car model, we're simply setting up brand name and brand uh, or sorry, brand name and model name. We're not using the logo in this particular model. Now, if this, was, if this was a more fleshed out application, so let's say this was some sort of um, application used on a car dealership by a car salesman to see what they have on their lot and then ultimately uh, choose a, a car that's on their lot and then generate an invoice or a more detailed um, uh, you know, documentation of the features of the vehicle, uh, then you can imagine this would be better laid out by having a car model or a car class that has all those properties, and then we can break it down into the other pieces, such as the brand and the model and so on. Uh, but again, keeping things simple, so we're just going to do, do it this way. Now, one other thing that is um, 
different about this one is you can see here, there's this AP, uh, model for API call section that I've created here. And so this is to handle the results that come back from that web service that I mentioned. And so at this point, it's probably a good time to mention the service that I'll be using. So uh, I'm actually going to be retrieving results from the American National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website. They actually do provide a free to use uh, API um, that, uh, that we'll be using for this example. So the specific API that I'm using from them is uh, get, models, or get Models for Make. So you can see here, uh, all we need to do is plug in a model or a make name. Uh, and as you can probably guess, we have the three that I showed in the um, in the actual sample application. So we plug that in, and then it gives us back um, the list of all the models that that particular manufacturer or brand makes. And so in order to get the um, it, in order to get these uh, these classes here, I actually used a uh, class generation service. So what I did was I got the a sample of the JSON results from here, copied it. And then over here, I have this website that simply converts JSON to C Sharp classes. And so pretty simple. I just kind of cheated here to make it simpler or easier for myself. So plug that in, convert, and then it brings up the, you know, the generated classes. And so the only thing I did from there was to rename some of these classes from result to, uh, I think I used API, the yeah, API car model is what I used here, and then model, risk, model list results uh, for the other class. And so uh, pretty simple, uh, and then you can see here we're all, we are using uh, Newtonsoft JSON uh, on this particular class as well. So that's how this model was generated, and that's how we got to this point. So next up, let's look at the views. So we're going to start with the main page. All right, but you can see we have three different pages. So we have main page, car list page, and car details, uh, but we'll start with main page and kind of go in order here. So uh, in building the main page, we start by first setting our binding context. Um, and so we do have uh, a view model for each of these pages. So there is a main page view model. So you can see that here in the main in the binding context. So um, we've set that up and then we'll talk about what's actually in the main page view model in just a bit. From there, the actual main page is laid out using a grid. So there is a grid that contains three rows, and each of those rows contains uh, a single control. So we have a label, the Sync Fusion Carousel, and then a button. So the label is pretty simple and straightforward. It simply says, choose your card below. This text color is white, and you can see that it's centered. So nothing really special about that. Next up in the second row, uh, we've got the Sync Fusion Carousel. And so here you can see we've, of course, set it to the second row, grid.row equals one. And we've set the binding, uh, or we've bound the item source to car brand list. So this is a uh, property inside of the view model, of course. Um, and the same, and then we have also got an item template. So one of the features of the Sync Fusion Carousel is that items can be displayed in an item template. And so I'll talk about that in just a bit. And then for the rest of these settings, item width, item height, spacing, vertical options, and so on, these are all going to be uh, both platform and resolution specific. To keep things simple here and just just to not show you a wall of code, I've, only, I've decided to only focus on the, uh, the, the Android emulator here in terms of my resolution, scaling, and all that. So there's I don't have any additional on-platform or platform-specific code or resolution-specific code. But uh, in, an, in an actual application, in a, in a production application, you would probably want to have that in order to make sure that, that everything is laid out correctly, depending, uh, regardless of the size uh, and uh, type of the device that this is being displayed on. And so the third row in this grid displays our button. And so the button here is used to actually pass over whatever the selected item was in the carousel to our main page view model. So you can see here that we're actually using commanding on this button. So uh, there is a command that is attached to it, and then we're passing over a parameter that is actually bound to or referencing the carousel itself. And so from the carousel, we're pulling the selected index property. And so that's uh, generally what's going on here on the main page. Now, at the very bottom here, we have two other things going on. We have two stack layouts, and essentially these are used to display the busy indicator. So we have uh, a, an empty stack layout that simply has a background color and an opacity set. And then the second st uh, stack layout contains my, my busy indicator. 
Now you'll notice that the busy indicator, or the stack layouts and the busy indicator, are all referencing this is loading property. So this is how what I'm using to both enable the busy indicator and also set whether or not those stack layouts are visible and enabled as well. So they all turn on together essentially. Whenever you tap the button, the 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 um the stack layout with the uh, white background that's been faded to 0.25 in terms of opacity will will display as well as the uh, busy indicator on top of it, and it'll give a better indicator to the user that something is happening and the, the application is, is busy loading something. Okay, so let's go back up here. Now, when it comes to any of the Sync Fusion controls here, there's actually uh, a couple of steps you want to follow in order to actually get them into your application and get them working. So in addition to installing your um, NuGet packages for the project, you also need to um, reference the assemblies. And so what I'm going to do is going to pull back out here and go to our documentation. And in the doc documentation, I'm going to go to the Syncfusion carousel um, section. So for all of these controls, there's going to be a getting started page. So I'm going to click on this one for the carousel. And here you'll see that um, if you're, when you're working with the XAML, you do need to add a namespace in order to reference the assemblies. And so uh, essentially you can just uh, come here, grab this, copy and paste it, um, or rather copy it, and then paste it into your XAML code. Um, so I've added it here, uh, but one thing I did do is I changed the, the actual namespace from Syncfusion to Carousel. Since I have more than one Syncfusion control, I didn't want these to be, uh, I didn't want there to be any, um, um, any issues with that. So this has been renamed to Carousel, otherwise this was simply uh, copied and pasted from the documentation. So once you've got your namespace set up, then of course you can call that in the XAML and it will bring up the appropriate control depending on what namespace you've um, allotted there. And so once you've done that, um, or once that's done, then you can actually start to uh, flesh out the control, um, you know, lay it out in the, in the XAML, and uh, we can start to build on it from there. And so, uh, let's see. All right, so now let's look at the, the actual view model that's behind this page. So there's actually nothing, for, in, for all of the views that we have here, there's nothing in the code behind. It has not been touched at all for any of the three pages that have been created. So everything was done completely um, in the view models. So uh, let's look at the view model for the main page. Okay. So let's start by looking at the properties for the main for the page or for this class. So this class does implement iNotify property change. So you can see the very first property is that property changed event handler. Next we have our car brand list observable collection, and this is what feeds the um, Syncfusion carousel controls. This is what actually holds the, the image items that are being displayed in that carousel. Now if we quickly skip down to the constructor, we can see that uh, this is how we're actually populating that, <clears throat> uh, that car brand list. So from here, you can see that we're essentially hard coding in those images. So there's only three, so I didn't really um, spend the time creating a, a whole web service or anything like that to pull these from. And so you can see this is where that overloaded constructor comes in. So we're essentially adding a new um, car brand object and then feeding in the um, car brand name and the car brand logo uh, properties from here. And you can see this is just, these are of course just simple strings. So now at this point, it also would be a good idea to explain where these are coming from. So these are, we're, I'm using the same images across all projects, across all the platforms. So um, I'm just giving them a common name and the only thing that you really need to uh, be aware of is where these images go or where they come from within the different projects. So for Android, if you're um, using that um, platform, they go in the resources folder, drawable, and then you can see them here. Um, I have my three images, my Audi, BMW, and Mercedes pictures. If you're dealing with iOS, then you'll be working with asset catalog. So you'll create an image asset catalog and then add your um, images there. So you can see in here, I've got my three logos uh, there. And then lastly, with the UWP, if you're again using a common, um, a single common image file and you don't want to reference different platform specific images, then here they will simply go into the root of this project. So you can see my three uh, car brands here. Okay. So back to the properties. Um, 
So the next one in the view model is an observable collection for car models. And so the reason why we have this here is because on this main page view model, we're also calling that API service that I mentioned earlier. So that um, uh, API that gives us back the car models is being called in, on this view on this view uh, yeah, on this view model. So I need a observable collection to store those results. Next, we have the car list uh, get car list command. So this is the command that's being uh, referenced by the button. Um, and then we also have uh, our is loading property, which is what we're using to enable and disable that busy indicator. And so since I mentioned it, let's go ahead and take a look at the um, at the API. So the way that API is called is through the button. And what the button is referencing is this command. So we have this get carless command, which is an asynchronous uh, command. So uh, and it's set to this task of get car list. So what get car list does is it first sets the is loading property to true. So that enables the uh, busy indicator, enables the stack layout that contains the busy indicator and so on. And then we start to create a couple of variables in order to store uh, the various pieces of information that are coming from uh, or that are going to be used in order to get these car models uh, or get that car model list. So first up is we're getting the uh, the integer or the uh, sorry, the index of the selected item from that carousel. So remember in the button on that main page, we're uh, passing in this parameter that is the selected index um, from the carousel. So whenever you, the user swipes on that carousel, let me show that off again. So whenever a user uh, swipes on this carousel, it of course changes the selected index. And then whenever that, um, the next button is pressed, that selected index gets passed over to the main page view model. And so the way we're using that index on this car model or on this uh, main page view model is we're using it to then correlate it to the index of the car brand uh, item inside the car brand list. So, uh, you know, so select an index one will be uh, let's say Audi and then two is BMW and then three is Mercedes or, you know, whatever it correlates to. So that car brand um, variable will essentially store the name of or the brand name from that selected item. Next up, we create a new uh, page. So that'll be the next page in the uh, um, in the sequence, so it'll be the, which is the car list page. So we create a new one of those. We also create a new instance of my API service, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Next up, we actually um, populate the car model list uh, um, observable collection with the results of that call to that API. So let's go ahead and take a look at that API and, and what it does. So the API is in this services folder, and there's an API class in there. And here you can see that it's just a simple implementation of the HTTP client. So all I'm doing is um, I've created a synchronous task that returns an observable collection uh, of type API car model that we saw in our car model um, class here. So this is the, the, the results from that API call. And so coming back here, uh, all we're really doing is using a simple um, string format to um, essentially pass in the make of the selected car from the carousel. So that we get that from, we get that from the, I thought I left it open. So we get that from here for this car brand variable. So there again, this is what's getting that brand name from the selected item in the carousel. So we pass this over to that um, API call. And so once we take that, we can then create our, our complete API um, URI. So it'll it'll be the full API endpoint and then including whatever brand name was chosen by the user. Then that'll of course return a result and then we add all those items into this um, into this observable collection of type API car model. And so it's a pretty simple implementation there. And then uh, again, so whatever the results of that uh, ends up being will be the contents of our car model list observable collection. And so next in the sequence in, in this uh, get car list task is to create a new view model for the car list page. And so in that view model, we're automatically passing over this car model list um, observable collection, which will then be the basis, of course, for um, the contents of the list view on that second page. So we'll, we'll take a look at that once we get over to that second page. And then lastly, we, of course, navigate to the next page, the car list page. And then before uh, moving on, we return the is loading property to false. 
And the reason we do that is so that if the user hits the, nav the back navigation button in the application, so let me show you. So if I go back, that this page isn't stuck showing the activity indicator still running. Um, so you do want to make sure that you turn it back off so that if a user goes back, the activity indicator resets as well. And so if I make a different uh, selection here, you can see it turns back on and so on. All right, so that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. And so you can see that actually getting the carousel itself uh, up and running is really simple. You simply uh, install the, uh, get your references in order, whether it be a NuGet package or if you're uh, referencing, referencing them locally, you plop it onto your, your XAML page, make sure you uh, reference the namespace. And then as far as uh, populating it with some, some data, uh, you simply um, bind it to some, some list of some kind. So I'm using an observable collection. It could obviously be a generic list as well. Um, and then the, the other thing that, um, before we move on, that was um, being used here was that item template. And so again, the item template is a pretty simple implementation. So um, it's a, we're binding it to a static resource. So it's in the resource dictionary of the page. And you can see that this data template is simply an image, um, an image control, the standard image control that comes with, uh, that's available in Xamarin form. So the only thing that's uh, been done here is that we're binding to the brand logo property of the car brand uh, class. And again, that brand logo property it contains a string that references the, the image file that we're using. And so pretty simple. You can see though that you can add, you can really customize this by going uh, quite a bit deeper in terms of the, the items available or the uh, controls in your, your data template. But this data template actually also came from our documentation. So um, you can see here that uh, we do have a section for using a carousel item uh, using a, a custom template. And so I simply just use the one that we have here. All right, so let's move on to the next page in the application. So next up after the car list or the main page is the car list page. So let's go ahead and open that up. And here we have a very similar layout to what we had on the main page. So we essentially have a grid and then that grid contains the various controls that are displayed on the page. So there are two rows in this grid. And the first one contains another label. And again, it's a very simple label, simply says select your car below. And let's take a look at that so you can see it here. And then beneath that is the sync fusion list view. So the list view is in the second row. So grid row equals one. And we're binding to that car model list that we passed over from the main page now to the view model of the car list page. And so that's where we're getting the, uh, you know, the data for that list view. And then next we're doing something a little bit different. So you can see here that we're actually using um, Xamarin's uh, event to, um, uh, event, uh, what is it called? Event to command behavior class. Sorry, I couldn't think of it. And so um, this implementation that I've that I've used here is actually it actually came from a knowledge base article on the same fusion website. And I wanted to use it as an example to um, just kind of uh, let you know that we do have uh, as far as the sync fusion support is concerned, we have our documentation page, which is just our uh, standard documentation. We have forums. We also have a knowledge base. And of course, you have dedicated support where you can ask. Uh, our developers, anything. So if you're stuck on something, if you just have a simple question, or if you actually need to see how something is done, we have our, our support team available uh, at all times for that. But this, in this case, um, I chose to do it this way because of this knowledge base article that explains exactly how, how to do this. So on the Syncfusion website, we have this knowledge base article on how to turn events into commands uh, with behaviors in sync fusion list view and so essentially what i've done there is i've taken the code that was given in this example and used it in my application in this knowledge base article they, they even provide a sample application with everything already implemented um, and ready to go and so um, the because of the event to command behavior um, implementation that also is what's um, that also accounts for this helpers folder here. So all of the, the code that goes into that event to command behavior uh, is found here under this helpers folder. And again, that, all of that came from that sample that, that was included in the um, knowledge base article. Now, one last note on this, um, despite this pr uh, specific implementation of this feature, we, are, we will be including uh, commanding for 
uh, various events in the list view in, in a future update. So this will be updated to actually be uh, even simpler than it is than the one you see here. So there will be commanding for these events in the future. Okay. But if we take a look at that event to command behavior, you can see that we're binding the item tapped event to this card tap command. And we'll see that when we look at the, um, the view model. And then we're also, of course, got this converter, which will convert the, um, the, event, the, uh, the event arguments to the, the proper um, type or class that, that they need to, to be bound to. So we have uh, different gestures that are, that are being um, consumed by this, uh, by this list view. So there's uh, tap gestures, the swipe gestures, and, and all those need to be converted to a specific type in order to be consumed correctly. And so uh, beneath the list view, then we essentially have our um, the same stack layout implementation that was used in the main page in order to get the busy indicator uh, working on here as well. So there's a second busy indicator um, on the car list page. So whenever a user taps on a car model to generate that PDF, um, if for whatever, for whatever reason it takes any amount of time, they'll get an, uh, that busy indicator to let them know something is happening. But if we actually take a look at that, it's really fast, so you don't typically see the, the busy indicator. So you can see that it, it didn't have time to actually come up. Okay, so um, we need to do the same thing that we did uh, last time. So whenever you're using a sync fusion control, you need to make sure you include the proper namespaces. So here I have one for list view and I have one for busy indicator as well. And so again, you'll find that in the documentation under the getting started section. So typically you can just copy and paste those right into your XAML and then you're good to go. And so when we take a look at this list view, we also have an item template. So uh, of course we support item templates and you can see here we have a, or I have a simple example of one being used to display the, the items that come back from the API call. So we're getting two pieces of information from that API call. We're getting the name of the make, so essentially the brand name is repeated. And then we get the individual model name for each of the different cars that that particular uh, brand makes. And so those are then essentially um, laid out into these two labels. Now, one thing that is uh, that you might run into if, if, if you're sort of new to this, if, you, if this is kind of the first time you're building a Xamarin application, um, or maybe perhaps this is the first time you're dealing with an Android application, there's one thing that you do have to be aware of is that um, if you create a new project and you, let's say you build this, it will not work the first time you run it in terms of pulling that data from the API. So one thing to be aware of is for your Android um, project, you do have to go into its properties, go to Android options, come down to advanced, and then set the S SSL and TLS implementation from default to native TLS 1.2 plus. Um, by def if you leave it at the default settings, the API will simply stall and it, it will never call out. Uh, and it, it won't give you any errors. It'll simply not do anything. And so it's a very kind of confusing error if you're not familiar with that. So just be aware if you're dealing with Android, you have to co come here to Android Options, Advanced, and change your SSL TLS implementation to native TLS 1.2 plus. And that will allow you your application to actually call out to that particular service and services like it. Okay. And so Again, uh, otherwise beyond that, it, this is a, still a pretty simple implementation. Again, that's kind of the theme here. So it's just a uh, kind of a crash course into how, you know, how easy it is to get these things in your application. And then, of course, from there, you can modify them and um, customize them further. So that's pretty much it for the, the XAML of the car list page. So let's go ahead and take a look at its view model. Okay, and if we look at the properties, we can see a very similar um, layout to what we had before on the uh, on the main page. So we start off with uh, the property change event handler, since we are using iNotify property changed. We have the car model list um, observable collection uh, that holds all the car models that come back from the API call. We have the is loading property for the activity indicator or the busy indicator rather, and then we have our command. And so you can see here. Uh, pretty simple uh, constructor. So we set is loading to false um, whenever we look we create the page uh, We also set the car model list to the um, to this model list um, uh, Parameter that came from the main page view model and then of course we set our uh, Car tap command. So this is very similar implementation of what we saw on the main page. It's another asynchronous uh, task 
And so, uh, and it follows a very similar structure. So first we set the busy indicator to true to turn that on. And then we uh, create a couple of variables. So we bring in, uh, so I've created a, a variable called args, which will take in the event arguments from the car tap command and then cast them as um, of type sync fusion list view uh, item tab event args. And with that, I'll, I'll then be able to pull out the car brand and car model uh, properties from that selected item essentially. So you can see here the make name, the model name, I'm passing those over to this new variable called car brand and car model. And so those are then used to pass into my next service, the PDF service. And so this is what generates the car model specific PDF. So you can see here that I am calling that PDF service, I'm creating a PDF, I'm calling the create PDF um, method here, and then I'm passing over those two variables, car brand and car model, and that will give me the sort of personalized um, data for each one of those PDFs. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that PDF service. So this is, of course, our implementation of the SyncFusion PDF library, the PDF file format library. Now this example, or this code, came from an existing SyncFusion example. Um, in the interest of time, uh, don't really have time to really go over uh, everything that's being done here. Um, so perhaps we can save that for a future webinar. And if you would like to see that, let us definitely let us know in the comments or in the questions box. And uh, we'll certainly set that up if you guys want to see it. Um, but just to give you an idea of where this came from, I actually grabbed this from a, a previous SyncFusion example. So if you have downloaded the SyncFusion Essential Studio or any of the um, control packages that come with the samples, you'll get this. You'll get the SyncFusion control, uh, control panel, and then that will give you access to all of the different uh, libraries that we offer, as well as their um, samples. So if I come down to phone and tablet, I can select Xamarin, and then I'm going to go ahead and explore my samples. And then I'll bring up my file explorer. Inside of that, we have a sample browser, or a, sorry, a sample folder. And they're split up into three platforms, Android, Forms, and iOS. I'll go to Forms. And then here, we have the uh, all the different examples for all the different controls that, um, that we offer for Xamarin. And so in order to get the PDF document that I chose, I went here to the PDF folder, went to the shared um, project samples and I use the getting started um, project there and so if I look at the source code for that we can see here uh, everything I needed to generate that PDF so it's essentially the exact same code uh, with a few tweaks here and there so the main things that I changed were um, I added uh, so I removed all the references to Syncfusion just to make it more a little bit more um, appropriate for a car app and then up here this is this this is the header or the title of the page that is what I replace with the make and then down here file formats this is the subheading I replace that with the model just to give us that um, that uh, you know that personalized PDF I also changed the colors here so uh, we had a violet color I changed all the violets to red and then the last thing I did so here in this implementation we're actually saving the resulting PDF document to a uh, to act to an actual file on that device, and then that file is then loaded uh, or could be loaded into the device's default PDF viewer or the Syncfusion PDF viewer. And so, for my implementation, I I got rid of all this code essentially, and I simply um, saved the document to a stream, and then I returned that stream um, in order to, to be able to use it in the PDF on uh, the PDF viewer. So if we look at this, you can see here where I've passed in the make and the model into the heading and the subheading. I've changed some of these bullet points. And then at the very bottom, I am saving this to a stream and then returning that stream since this particular um, uh, method does in fact return a stream. And so that's essentially the implementation for the PDF. So it's actually really simple to use the, the Syncfusion PDF file generator. Um, you can uh, use it for any number of uh, PDF documents. They don't have to be simple like the one that we're using here. They can be interactive. They can include links. They can include graphics, images. Uh, they can be form. Fill, uh, they can be forms. They can be fillable, and so on. All right. So let's go back to that Carlos view model. So once that runs, then I uh, we we take the resulting PDF, 
and we store that into this PDF variable. And then we create the third page in the sequence. So we create the car detail page, just like we did before. We create a view model for it, and then we pass in the, v the PDF um, document, or the stream rather, uh, to that car detail view model. And then we set the binding context for that car detail page, and then we do what we did before. We navigate to the third page and reset our is loading property to false. And so now let's take a look at the final page in the sequence, the car details page. So car details essentially contains one, one thing. So it's a grid and inside the grid is the Syncfusion PDF viewer. And you can see how simple and easy it is to get that inside of your XAML. It's a single line of code and essentially one property has been set, which is the input file stream. Nothing else needs to be done um, to get this to appear the way it does in my app. So you don't really need to set any set uh, any size settings or anything like that unless you want to. And if you did want to extend this further, then you can include a toolbar and other controls for the user inside of the PDF viewer. Um, but I, d I decided to keep it simple and just display the PDF itself. So just like before, you need to include the correct uh, namespace. And again, you get that from the um, documentation. You can see here that we're binding to the PDF document stream uh, that would be in our binding context, or as in our uh, Cardito view model. Um, and actually, this is not necessary since I did set that in the in the uh, view model. But again, really simple. So, uh, and just to give you just to refresh your memory, what this looks like. Uh, so it's a very simple PDF. Here's the title, and the heading, and the subheading, and then everything else is is hard coded. So obviously, the rest of this can also be generated automatically. You can pass in other parameters if if you're using an API or a service or whatever it might be that gives you a lot of data. You can see how easy it is to build out a complete PDF from that. And so from there, let's go ahead and look at the view model for this. And you can see that, um, again, um, I notify property change this use. Uh, and then we have this stream, this PDF document stream um, property. And all we're doing here is just setting it to um, the PDF stream um, parameter that we passed over from the previous view model. So that PDF variable becomes this PDF stream parameter, and then that bit gets set to the PDF document stream property here. And that's it, a very, very simple um, implementation. And so uh, it's very it's very easy to um, or this is a very with this implementation it's a pretty clean way of doing things. So whenever you back out, it kind of gets rid of all those resources. And then uh, if you select a new item, it creates a new PDF document and then it creates a new instance of the PDF viewer and um, allows you to keep the the application pretty clean and pretty pretty stable. So nothing really extra that you need to do to make sure that resources are, are being handled correctly. All right. And so that um, pretty much is the uh, application uh, in a nutshell. So uh, we will be making the source code for this application uh, available in, in, a, in the blog post once this um, webinar um, makes it to the YouTube channel and our blog post for it goes up. So you'll be, have access to the source code for this application if you want to take a look, look at it yourself and 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 see um, you know again see the code for yourself and play with it and and even take it and expand on it further if you'd like. I also want to point out that um, we uh, if you do download the Syncfusion Essential Studio, so I actually would recommend you download the controls even if you don't plan on using them uh, referencing the assemblies locally because we do provide several other sample applications uh, in addition to um, the actual individual samples for each control. So there's a sample browser application that you get to source code, as well as several other complete applications that you can see the source code for and also play with and expand on if you'd like. All right, and that is it. And so hopefully this sample application walkthrough was useful and helped you to learn how easy it is to integrate Syncfusion controls into your Xamarin application. All right, so before moving on to questions, let me also mention our community license. So let's come back here. So for smaller companies with revenue under 1 million US dollars, all Syncfusion products are available for free. That includes all of the controls in Essential Studio as well as our enterprise solutions. 
We have plenty of customers who have built up their businesses starting with our community license. And for those who do not qualify for the community license, let me introduce you to our flat licensing. We offer four tiers of pricing and uh, four tiers of pricing tied to the size of your organization starting at $39.95. Our global flat license eliminates compliance and licensing headaches by making sure everyone who needs a license has one, including third parties and contractors. As your team grows, you can focus on your projects instead of worrying about headcount. There are no surprise fees with a global license, so you can focus on your projects instead of worrying about headcount. If you'd like more information, please visit us at syncfusion.com.